Hello guys, how's it going? My name is Dowran. The background for this video are just some 3v3 arenas that I had along my time playing in Legion. Some of these games are old, some of these games are newer. But in today's video, while we have topic of arenas in the background, I want to talk a little bit about 2v2 arenas. I feel like I haven't talked about 2v2 arenas besides me playing in 2v2 arenas or showcasing some of the games that I have in 2v2s, whether it be rated 2s or skirms. I feel like there is an issue with 2s. We all know that what the issue is, twos don't have any kind of balancing, or the balancing is really, really dif different and weird than there is in threes. World of Warcraft for the longest time hasn't been the game that's been known for its balance in PvP, but I would argue that currently in Legion the balancing is, while not perfect, pretty good. It's not quite... I mean, it, it does have some, you know, issues. I feel like maybe Retribution Paladins are really, really strong. I won't say too strong or overpowered. I feel like... Certain classes in Legion are super strong in certain situations, but I don't think there's a single class that's just best at everything. All classes are viable somewhere and inviable in other situations. Some classes get completely countered by others. It's a big game of rock, paper, scissors, but no class doesn't have scissors that cut them or paper that covers them. Every class has a counter of some sort or even a mechanic from another class. Like, for example, we think assassination rogues are super strong, right? We've seen them in BlizzCon, we saw just how strong they are in arenas, just how much damage they can put out. They do lack the utility, but as we saw, sometimes when you have, especially in Legion right now, if you have just a lot of core damage, then it doesn't matter how much utility you have. It is difficult to peel off your dots and your bleeds once you set it on the target. So then killing and training healers becomes that much easier for you. Mainly because of the way the game is. But Assassination Rogues do have a counter and that is Red Paladins. Retribution Paladins, while they are probably one of the best support classes as a DPS in the game for arenas by far currently, I would say that Assassination Rogues get completely countered by Red Paladin. Maybe in not as major ways as we might expect them to be, but they do get countered in minor and somewhat major ways. For one, Paladins deal with poisons fairly easy, as they are able to get poisons off of the friendlies. Second, Paladins are able to take off Vendetta with a bop, so let's say your healer is getting vendetta every two minutes, you have a bop available in order to stop the damage and stop the rogue being able to deal any physical damage, which he does need to. Another thing when it comes to cleansing poisons, while poisons aren't the majority of the assassination rogue's damage as we saw corrode and rupture bleeds are super important, the envenom damage and the crippling venom damage does kind of stack up. On top of it, if you do need to deal damage, you need energy and assassination rogues get energy by having bleeds tick on poison targets. If the Red Paladin removes poisons off of targets that have bleeds from Assassination Rogue, Assassination Rogue cannot get as much energy and cannot be f as far as effective. Now, I would go naming some of the other classes with my personal opinion, but I feel like I'm just gonna get flamed because I'll get comments like, oh, you're just a rogue, that's the only reason why you think so-and-so class is really, really strong, but let's let's be honest here, at least with Paladins, right? Retribution Paladins. They have a way to break your healers out of CC every 30 seconds with a honor talent. They have a bop which allows melee characters to be able to continue dealing damage to you and as a melee you cannot do much about it. Their bubble no longer reduces the amount of damage they have reduced once they use it. They have a decent absorb which is not the greatest but the amount of damage it deals back is pretty insane and this is particularly annoying in 2v2s. Two the lower the paladin's health the more damage is able to give to you but he shouldn't really worry about low health because auto bubble. And while I do think that hey it's a good thing to innovate the game and add new things like a wrench and a cogwheel to see how it all spins together and I do somewhat support the idea of auto bubble as a concept. I'm not sure if it is all that fair in certain situations. In 3v3's auto bubble isn't that much of an issue. It is just a mechanic that you have to get through, like for example with mages and ice block. Except auto bubble is more like a guarantee, that's no problem. I've beaten paladins before at about 1800-1900 MMR so far. Auto bubble hasn't really been an issue, it's more like a boss mechanic. You just gotta get them low enough, get the bubble, the next time you go and line up CC, they're dead. That's completely understandable. So in a 3v3 aspect, this makes sense. In a 2v2 aspect, however, let's say if you have me going with any DPS class, literally any, it could be even a red paladin, and we're going against a retribution paladin assassination rogue. So I shouldn't hit the paladin because if he gets too low, then he'll nuke me and the other DPS unless we are somehow able to get his health low, then get away from his auto bubble as it comes in. 
which is a melee class it is more or less difficult maybe if i time it right so then maybe i should sit on an assassination rogue but the assassination rogue can literally get bopped and he can deal all the damage to me and i can't really touch him i can't blind i can't gouge he can't do nothing now before you go running to the comment section i am not trying to make this video as a oh let's shit talk about paladins i am just giving you examples of a 3v3 situation versus 2v2 situation in a 3v3 situation, there's many variants. I have a healer on my team, I have another DPS, I have me as an alpha rogue with all the different utilities that I have. And then there's the paladin, and he's not the only kill target. He might be with a hunter, he might be with a priest. So it's three different kill targets and multiple different defensive and offensive mechanics for us to watch for. But there is a win condition in 3v3s, and it is possible to achieve. But in the 2v2s, when you are narrowing how many different variations you are dealing with, and by narrowing, I mean you're dealing with less different class varieties, you're dealing with less comp varieties, you're dealing with less spec varieties, then the, I guess the result gets a little bit skewed more or less. And what I mean by that is it becomes unbalanced and in some cases not that fun. Currently in Legion, and this has been the fact in Warlords and MOP, healer DPS are really strong comps. In the past, however, we gotta take a look and acknowledge MOP and WAD healers were able to keep up two different targets, and I feel like that was their initial design. As a healer, you are supposed to be able to support two different targets, be it two different DPS in the 3v3, be it yourself another DPS in a 2v2, be it whatever situation, two different targets, you could usually cover them. So, hence, that's why healers were really, really strong in 2v2s. And combined with certain healer DPS combos, you had some really really strong CC and you could literally take one target completely out of the game while nuking down the secondary target and as a healer you just had so much healing you didn't even need to develop or you didn't have to be a really skillful player in order to be able to play in arenas so we had a lot of players that are like 2k or 2200 that backpedaled and I thought that was um as me and Tiergo tried to just so hard to play through some we played against gladiator players and we tried to beat them so many times sometimes we were able to sometimes we weren't but then there was other players that were at we were all playing at 2k MMR back in WAD and there's players backpedaling and uh, not even faking their kicks and it's like how would you even get up here and it's just like it's the real realization of oh my god the 2v2 arena bracket is just so broken it's just like it hits you that realization just hits you so hard and is, is so real at that point. So uh, we have healers that are super strong in the game and how does Blizzard decide to fix it? Eventually you're supposed to find a winner and a loser but when you have a healer DPS team versus another healer DPS team in 2v2s, how can you find which one team is going to win since healers are so strong? The best idea was dampening. I don't think it was the best idea but this is what Blizzard ended up rolling with. And dampening basically means that over time, as the game goes on, you heal for less and less and less. The amount of healing that you do decreases with every single couple seconds and stacks in percentage. So eventually, dampening is so high that you basically are barely healing the enemy, so you're able to line up barely any kind of CC together and finally score a kill. So it was all about then being ahead in cooldowns, being ahead defensives and offensives and such, and uh... That's basically what the game turned into. It was basically a game of dampening. Now, when we think about even the word dampening, dampening isn't really... Like, when you feel dampened, you feel really sad. You feel emotionally deflated. That's what it makes me think of. Alright, so you go into 2v2 arenas and eventually everybody comes down with depression or dampening and then you finally score a win. And I feel like that's not the best way to fix arenas. And, I mean, so far dampening has worked thus far. But I feel like that's not the best way to fix arena. Dampening doesn't sound like a fun concept. At the time, we just thought that, hey, okay, so dampening is going to be in the game. Not really sure how it's going to affect us at the time. But it's just going to be a concept. It's just going to be a part of the game and there's not a lot we can do about it. It's, it's just there. But when you think about it, it's not a fun concept that just simply over time, mainly because the game goes on for too long, the healing is reduced by a little bit, by a little bit, by a little bit, by a little bit, by a little bit. By a little bit. What you do with dampening system, you take out the capabilities of players to be able to come up with an awesome plan, awesome CC chain, awesome whatever, in order to completely outplay the other team. It becomes simply a game of, okay, we're just gonna wait and then we're gonna line up a couple CC after we waited long enough so we can deal as much damage as possible. I don't... I mean... If you're like me, I feel like there's an issue. Instead of having to come up with really cool mechanics where 
you have to outthink your enemy, outdo them, do better than they do, come up with some crazy strategy. In order to defeat them, you simply just wait until the healing is so low that you can finally score a kill. Some classes were really really good at dampening and some comps were literally made to run with the dampening mechanic. For example, LSD back from Pandaria. It consisted of an elemental shaman who could flame shock everybody and lava burst for burst damage. They had decent off healing for the healer or the warlock. Then we had the affliction warlock who was able to keep constant pressure on everybody forcing the healers to spend their mana at all times with really in, in no ability to take off the dots or you are forced with being Stalins and taking major burst damage. And we had Restoration Druid who was one of the best healers for dampening because of the healing over time effects and the mana management that she had at the time. It was simply just the best healer that could be mana efficient for arenas and stick around for quite a long while. It was originally a mechanic created so the game eventually ends and I feel like when you are making this mechanic where that's all it is, the game eventually will just drop off as there will be zero healing so somebody has to kill off each other. It doesn't feel as satisfying or as gratifying. It just it basically says, alright, get this over with, no healing, just finally somebody finish each other off. It's not a cool mechanic in order to give some kind of just a sense of reward for the player is I guess the issue that I have. And maybe that's the issue with 2v2s right now. But let me know what you think about this in the comment below. Let me know what you think about discussion. I'd like to hear from you guys. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.